Here is a core concept for biochemistry, determining net charge of amino acids and polypeptides. This is an actual assignment I was given, and here is how to do it. After we do a few of these, I'll compare it to the answer key and see if I was right. Step 1. First off, write anything, whether it's an amino acid or polypeptide, with an amino beginning and a carboxyl end. Draw a Step 2 is to draw a table underneath it. Any amino acid that is not part of the big seven, just X out. They are relevant. Step three, label the big seven. The lysine, histidine, and arginine are positively charged, and those are these guys right here. The aspartate and glutamate are negatively charged right here. The cysteine and the tyrosine are these guys right here. Those are neutral. Or rather, they are not neutral. They have neutral R groups. Now, step four. The pH of the solution acts on the amino acid residue. If the solution is more acidic, it will protonate the amino acid. If the pH of the solution is more basic, it will deprotonate the amino acid. Now, remember from Gen Chem that acids have heaps of hydrogen, which are just protons hanging around, and they want to get <coughs> rid of those. Now, bases will steal protons since they are lacking in the proton department. There are fancy smancy mechanisms for how this reaction happens in each amino acid, but we'll save those for an organic chemistry video. Now, let's get started. Here's my mouse. Here we go. So, I'll scroll over. and check out this table. Now there's nothing wrong with writing down your thoughts in an exam or a homework assignment. Note that bases accept protons and are the bigger numbers. Acids will donate protons and are the lower numbers. So we're going to look at the pKr then determine how the pH will act on it. Now this column here I have as the NH3 column. It looks like this table will it's using some different technique. Um, and then the COOH, the carboxyl group, or the carboxylic acid group, we'll be using this column here. So here's what you do. So starting off, we have the amino group, the NH3+. Now you can see that it's a base, has a bigger number, and you know that will be the proton acceptor. So NH3 in a pH3 solution will be protonated. It's going to accept a proton. Since NH3 is already positive and protonated, it's going to stay positive. So you have a positive one there. In pH 7, it's the same deal. It, you're going to look at the pKr number, which is a 9, and that's bigger than the 7, so the 9 is going to take the proton. Now at a pH 11, the pH 11 is more basic, so the solution is more basic. That takes the proton. Since NH3 is positive, that's going to lose that proton. It's not going to become negative, it's going to reduce to NH2 and become zero. The ILE is not one of the sevens, so you just X those out, and this, you just apply the same pattern to these others. Now, lysine is a positively charged R group, and you see here that the 10.5 is the bigger number, and that takes the proton. Next to a pH 3, so that's going to stay positive, it's going to keep its proton. pH 7, the 10.5 is still larger, it's going to keep its proton and stay positive. At pH 11, however, the pH 11 is more basic, so that's going to take the proton. And notice that lysine is not going to become negative, it's going to become neutral with the zero. Now aspartate and glutamate are both negatively charged groups. So here we have a 3.65 and a pH 3. So this is a little more basic. It's going to gain a proton. And that's not going to become positive. It just becomes neutral. Same for glutamate. Now at pH 7 and pH 11, since these guys are so acidic with a lower number, pH 7 and pH 11 are going to take the proton. And since they're negatively charged R groups, they're already at a negative 1. You don't make them a negative 2. They just keep their proton. So those, you would have negative ones for pH 7 and 11. Now Val, Pro, and Gly, you just X out. They're not part of the big seven. Now ARG with a 12.4 is very basic. That's going to generally almost always keep its proton. And so that's right here.
No, ARG. Actually, right here, arginine, positively charged R groups. So that's going to keep the proton 12.4 positive. You can use pluses or minuses. I use smiley and frowny faces. So that's going to have three plus ones. And very last, your COOH with a 2.34 is more acidic. That's usually going to donate a proton and become the COO negative ion there. And so that's going to donate that, become negative. So you're going to have a negative one, negative one, negative one. Then you just add up your positive ones, subtract your negative ones, and there's your net charge. And that's how you do these. Um, so let's check if I was right. And there you go. So that's how you do those. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, and happy studies.